I wanted to ask you, mm -hmm. um, uh, in 2020, what was the, uh, ultimately, uh, what was the uh, the average total voter turnout? Do you know as a percent? Was 55% of registered voters or, or do you know? Uh, I mean, I think the turnout was actually pretty high because of all the mail-in ballots. Um, okay. That was and again, and, and again, really, I mean, we have to take these numbers with a grain of salt because we don't know how much of that was just not real votes. So... Well, it's it, very hard to take any, anything from any of the numbers from 2020 seriously. Okay, so if you're watching the polling now, uh, even the Fox News, uh, Wall Street Journal, Siena College, Siena College, by the way, has a 7% miss rate in the last six presidential elections. Fox News is a, is a horrendous, there are horrendous polling. S on, this, the, the, the Fox really News, bad. yeah, Siena College is awful. It's six point, I, you know why? You know how I know this? Rasmussen publishes it every day. He goes like, I, I, people stop asking me about the Siena poll and the fact that Harris is now at 50 and Trump's at 41 or whatever. Just stop asking me because it's wrong. Here, Here's our tracking poll, which is Trump is flirting with mm -hmm. the 50% uh, margin. She is bouncing up and down between 45 and 41. Uh, in a weighted poll like that, that means he's up 10. But I, even in the Fox News Siena College polls, I saw him this morning. It is a 1% game, according to them, in Michigan. That means mm -hmm. Trump is landsliding Michigan. It's 40, It's 46.4 to Trump to 47.1. It's within one point in Michigan, according to that poll. Dude. If the if the, if if the if the gun owners and the union workers and the blue collar guys and the red staters show up in Michigan, uh, unless unless they can manufacture a half a million votes in Detroit like they did in 2020, um, uh, uh, Trump will win Michigan. Possible. He doesn't even need to win Michigan. I, I think the linchpin really is is Pennsylvania. That's oh. that's that's really where he has his best shot. In the Midwest, uh, I would rank them as Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, Michigan in terms of likelihood. Okay. Um, and even Virginia, I would say, is becoming more in play. Um, Hung Cow. Hung voted. Cow. If Hung Cow wins that Senate seat, there's a good possibility Trump is elected president oh, because yes. of Virginia. Yes. If Hung Cow wins, then Trump has won the presidency. That's that's for sure. Because um, that shows a significant shift in the, in the electorate. But yet, I... Um, the polls are not reflective of, you know, what's really happening. But this is a 50-50 race, though, because of the amount of variables that I alluded to earlier. Um, and it's going to be all about ground game and, and getting getting the ballots in the boxes. Uh, and I think there's been a there's been I know there's been a significant shift amongst young people. Um, as bad as Fox News is with their polling, they found a uh, in Arizona, a 25 point shift amongst voters under the age of 30. In Arizona, wow, Fort strong, twenty-five points since the last time they polled. Well, you know who's in um, Arizona and who's campaigning at University of Arizona and others. Charlie Kirk, I saw it yesterday. Turning point, your well, boy, turning point, turning TP, point TP USA is out in force in the in, at the University of Arizona. Yep. Absolutely, yeah. They um, uh, they have a heavy presence in Arizona, uh, in Wisconsin. They have field offices in Wisconsin. Um, there's there's significant efforts happening in Georgia. Um, and then there's another organization called Pennsylvania Chase, led by uh, Cliff Maloney, who's doing fantastic work in Pennsylvania. So there are there are these efforts did not exist in 2016 or in 2020. So if you want to, you know, have solace, know that there are efforts happening on the ground that Republicans never even dreamed of doing until now. Wow. So um, and this is something that labor unions and the left have done for, for decades. You know, they just give their labor unions a few weeks off to go chase votes. Um, we've never done that because a lot of our people work for a living. But um, <laughs> this is darn it! This is darn you, people! You productive bastards! <laughs> these things have changed, and um, and uh, we're seeing some significant. I think you're going to see a, it's going to have a big impact come November. Uh, I'm just watching Fox News, and uh, Melonhead Carl Rove is on there uh, with his chalkboard. Uh, and he goes, well, according to the latest Fox News polls, uh, this is looking very, very dim for the Democrats. He goes, the in internal polling on those polls that you just showed, the nationwide poll has Trump up 15 points on immigration and up eight on the economy. 
And the two biggest which is issues. Which keeps hitting the immigration. Which is what? And that's why he keeps hitting the immigration issue because he knows that it's a, especially even among independents, he knows it's a it's a it's a winning issue for him. No, it is. Uh, it, it, it totally is. Um, so uh, it, it, those are my questions and about the the, the voter turnout. Uh, if you get the turnout of uh, of twenty twenty, um, and then you get the and, and there there there's another shift. I know. I, I don't know if you've talked about it. You know the other shift that I that, that I saw in that poll is not just young people; it's Latinos. He's plus 15. Oh, yes. Plus 15 in Latinos over where he was in 2020. He's still losing. Yeah. He's still losing because a Democrat, that's a constituency of there. But he's plus 15 of where he was losing in 2020. And he's doing a lot better with Hispanic men. Yes. Um, and I will say that the Latinos in places like Florida are very different than what you'll find, let's say, in the Northeast or even in uh, like border states like Texas and Arizona. Um, what, what you're fighting and what you're seeing in Florida are people that are fresh off of communi- you know, communism and socialism in South America and, um, and in uh, Central America. So they're, they've come here and they, they've seen it firsthand. Um, whereas in the Northeast, you have a lot of people from you know, Puerto Rico and Dominican Republic and places like that, Haiti. And then in, in Texas, you're getting obviously a lot of Mexico, a little bit of Guatemala. But, but here in Florida, you, there's a significant difference amongst um, that's why he does so well in places like Miami-Dade County, because you have a lot of people that have come over here um, from Brazil, from Colombia, from Venezuela, and they have a very, very different outlook. I don't even know if you can uh, – you you know, it's, it's just a – can't even compare the two. Uh, they have a very different outlook than what you find in places like like uh, the border right. states. You remember uh, – uh, Don, can you hang for the, through the break? Sure. Yeah. Okay. You remember the uh, the I, I talked about this when I uh, went to my uh, daughter's engagement party and I flew I, I flew to uh, to Logan, and remember I, I told a story about the guy from Brazil, the thirty uh, the uh, the thirty two uh, four year old engineer from Brazil who was on a green card, and I asked him I said well, what do you think about about immigration? He goes we're not happy about it. He goes I came here legally, and he showed me his card. He goes I have an actual card, and he goes I think it's completely. Uh, he's, he said I think it is unfair, Mister Mike. Uh, Don from the Bronx uh, to uh, Florida uh, uh, is on our Do Maker Hotline with uh, with us. AmericanThinker.com has this Don, and we're going to talk about Marcus Allen and Catholic stuff in just a second here. A couple of campaign things to wrap up with you. Kamala Harris faces a sixty four year curse. Which is 40 days into Election Day, Kamala Harris finds herself in a precarious position. No Democrat has ever won the pedanty while trailing in the final stretch. And only one Democrat, that's Obama in 2012, has ever won when the race was within the margin of error. Now with Harris holding a two, uh, uh, slim 2.7% lead, she faces a historic cha- challenge. If history is any guide... Harris's lead may not be enough to secure victory, as even demon grants with larger advantages have gone on to lose. Since 1960, Don, demon grants have never won the pedancy when trailing in the final weeks of the campaign. And then he mentions uh, Obama managing to, to eke one out in 2012. Humphrey in 1968 lost to Nixon. McGovern uh, trailing Nixon by a wide margin, lost in a landslide. Carter trailing Reagan lost. Mondal trailing Reagan lost. Dukakis trailing Reagan or trailing Bush lost. Kerry trailing George Bush in a final week's loss. Uh, the more that Harris gets out there and speaks, if we're to be honest about this, the more detestable and unlikable and just stupid she becomes. Don, I, I, I don't think the woman could have won the Democrat primary. I, I, <laughs> Elizabeth no, Warren well, she- would have beaten her. No, no, definitely not. I mean, she pulled at zero percent when she she actually ran uh, four years ago. She was pulling at zero percent when she left the race. So she's an uh, imminently unlikable person, and so is so is Walt. Oh, They're is. both very, very unlikable people. Um, and social media, this is where you know it becomes a strength. Is that you know there's enough people on X and all these other social media sites that you can see right through this stuff. And uh, we're living in a meme world. And all these memes have their effect. They have impact. Right. So while the left has the mainstream media, um, people on the right have memes. And I think they've been highly <laughs> effective. Are you saying that this is the Brian? Biden, but cutting down Kamala. Are you saying this is the Brian Koch election? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. He is the meme king. <laughs> 
Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, maybe Trump should don't, hire. Don't, you can't discount. You can't discount <laughs> the power of, of of mockery and humor and what it is doing to to evil. Uh, and he has it in spades. I've always contended that for years. For years, I said we would not take this culture back until we until we learned how to mock the left once again, how to make fun of them for who they are. And you're starting to see that happen. And I think that's a huge. I, I truly believe that is an underrated aspect of what's happening in the culture right now in terms of the shift. You're seeing like there's a comedian Ben Bankus. I don't know if anybody's ever seen Ben. I've Bankus, seen him. But his, yeah. <laughs> He's out there on stage just mocking all of all of them, their whole movement, mocking them, um, all the political correct stuff, like all, all the different things that, that they do. I mean, you know, he's doing things that essentially Don Rickles would have done back in the 70s. But now it's startling because we don't have comedians like that anymore. But that I mean, his shows are always sold out. There's an, people are craving this. They're craving mockery of what they know to be a, a just an insane and deranged world well i mean there are uh, uh, there are so many uh uh i think elements and uh moving parts to that um and the least of which is they're not what they do isn't funny anymore <laughs> i, I, I no. mean it's funny to mock but the result of it isn't funny anymore fentanyl deaths aren't funny Having entire neighborhoods taken over by the Sinaloa cartel in Texas, this is happening in Liberty, Texas, or in Cleveland, Texas, in Liberty County. That's not funny. Having the, 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 the Trump yesterday, Trump Tower talking about they're eating the dogs and they're eating the cats in Springfield. Let me tell you something that's going on in Springfield, Ohio, Don, and for the rest of the audience out here. Maggie, do, do you, you have the soundbite on here. Let's just play a little bit of it. Uh, digital media file number eight. This is an unreported story that should be national news because it has implications. Um, and thanks to the world's greatest radio producer, when she when she hit me with it, I went, yeah. And I went, and then she explained. I went, oh, oh, yeah, dummy. Not I didn't have my cup of coffee yet. Uh, can you play? And by the way, chat room is uh, we're making the chat room great again. Just hit seventy chatters. At crusadechannel.com forward slash chat. Thank you. Thanks to all of you and uh, the many of you that I see are revisiting our beloved uh, Crusader Stadium chat room at crusadechannel.com forward slash chat. Love to see you guys there. Uh, Maggie discovered this clip. Listen to this, Don. Mm -hmm. We've got a, a city that's in absolute turmoil. Everybody's against everybody. Chad Duncan is the police chief of Tremont City, Ohio, which is just outside of Springfield. He described a general atmosphere of lawlessness in Springfield, which he says is spreading to the surrounding area. People that shouldn't be driving are out there and they're allowed, they're allowing them to drive. Chief Duncan described one of his recent traffic stops involving a Haitian migrant. He didn't even have a license coming through town at 44 mile an hour in a 25 mile an hour zone. That's the second time in two weeks. I've... And you towed his car? Oh yeah, towed it for the second time. And Springfield wouldn't have? No. He suggested that one reason Springfield authorities might be going soft on reckless driving is to protect the Haitians' immigration status. If you get two misdemeanors, you are subject to be deported. Since Springfield became a media sensation. In Springfield, they're eating the dogs, the people that came in, they're eating the cats. Chief Duncan says his access to Springfield's police radio frequencies Listen was cut to this. off. What, what exactly was going on with that? Well, there was, uh, we were able to hear them on the radio, they have decided to go silent. We don't know what's going on in the city. That happened the day they brought the state troopers in to help them out. Why would you think they would make things hard to communicate? Nobody can hear what you say and they don't know what you're doing, so they'll have to answer to it. There was a threat at the school today. I couldn't hear it. I just caught wind of it from another guy, from another chief that's something right next to the city right if they would have taken the time instead of worrying about the elites lying in their pockets and just took the time this could have went so much smoother and been so much more beneficial to everybody involved but instead and so, and so because that didn't happen how do you 
how do you think this ends? Okay, you, you, you get the, uh, the, the the gist of it, uh, Don. So uh, basically, th you don't want this to happen in your bedroom community. You do not want the other police departments nearby to hear your radio traffic for obvious reasons. Now, Mike DeWine, it is known, he and his wife pay yearly missionary visits to Haiti. Yearly. They go down there, and they have adopted Haitian children. I saw his interview with Martha McCollum. I'm like, really? I didn't know that. Uh, DeWine took over. St the whole situation in Springfield, we've heard nothing. No, 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 no media and traffic has come out of Springfield since DeWine sent the state troopers down there. That tells me that they had a problem and that they knew it was a problem and that Trump was right and so were the other people and they needed to shut it up. And I don't know why DeWine would cooperate with Biden and Harris, but the, ch the chief of police next door actually knowing that that reporter was from Glenn Beck's Blaze. That was from the Blaze. That was not just a citizen reporter. Mm -hmm. That was a Blaze report. Knowing that a Blaze reporter was coming and was going to ask him questions, and he was very candid on the record. The interview is a lot longer. That's like the edited version. should tell you uh, 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 that the situation in that little town in Springfield, those citizens are being subjected to a hell they didn't ask for. That's happening all across the United States. It's happening in Aurora, Colorado. It's happening in Chicago where the gangs are now threatening the mayor going like, dude, if you don't do something about it, we will. It's happening in New York. Trump talked about it yesterday about taking the, uh, the streets back. You grew up in the, uh, you're, you're from the Bronx. Mm -hmm. What happened if the mm -hmm. Bronx were invaded by Haitians? What would you guys do about it? Well, uh, I can tell you what happened when the, um, the leftist mobs tried to go into the Bronx neighborhoods I grew up in the 2020. Okay. It was, there was there were rumors they were going to be showing up. And uh, I can tell you that uh, a, a lot of interesting characters came out and started walking the streets, and they didn't show up with their uh, their garbage pick, garbage can, uh, sh you know, uh, chest protectors and all the different things they were doing a riot in Manhattan. Okay. So, yeah. They, they, they didn't put it this way. The rioting that happened in 2020 in New York, didn't happen in Brighton Beach. It didn't happen in Staten Island, and it didn't happen in certain sections of Brooklyn and the Bronx for very specific reasons. And that's important there. Uh, and, and let's just one more point that I want to talk about: Marcus Allen and, and Catholic uh, men and, and toxic masculinity. Uh, let me just make one more point about it. how you're going to get rid of 15, 20 million people. How you going to deport? Blah, 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 blah. Uh, you're going to have people like that chief of police right there. They're going to go like, uh, "I round them up for you. Where you want me to put them? When when are you coming to get them?" I know where they're at. That's what's going to happen because there are good men that are sheriffs across the United States, just like him. And they're going to. And you, you think those sheriffs? You can only bribe them for so long if they are being bribed by by by, uh, by the DOJ or, or whoever Biden and Harris are using to bribe them. Um, you think those sheriffs who all got to run for reelection re reelection aren't hearing from their constituents? That's how, it's, that's how it's going to happen. Your local law enforcement, your first per, uh, Constitution officer that protects your rights and liberties under the Constitution is your sheriff. Your sheriff is going to take care of this. Go like, I'll round them up, Donald. President Trump, we'll round them up. You just got to come get them. That's how it's going to happen. You're not going to have federal marshals being hired by the thousands. They don't need them. Local LEO is going to do the heavy lifting. Okay.